Hey everybody, welcome back to We Are Podcast Network. This is We Are Bagoo, Season 1, Episode 7, Call of Duty Zombies. If this is your first time checking out the podcast, thank you so much. Please go to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, or iTunes, and give We Are Podcast a like. And if you get a chance, head over to our social media. All links can be found in the description. We're at Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at backslash We Are Podcast. With that said, on to the podcast. We are Bagu. Hey everybody, welcome to We Are Bagu. This is Duck. I am here with Doc Ethan Eastwood. Yes, sir. Yes, and sir. thank you so much for checking us out today. What is We Are Bagu? We talk Atari to Steam and everything in between. Today we have with us a very special guest, my little brother, Eric Wentz. So hi Eric, how you doing? Hello, hello, hello. Hello, he is- Eric. Hello. We're super excited to have him on an Easter Sunday. Happy Easter, guys. Yeah, happy Easter, guys. Uh, You're ready to talk about some sacrilegious shit. Well, you know what? Sometimes that's what you got to do. I already got my daily church in. I got my exercise in. Let's get our evilness in. So, yes, we are going to talk about Call of Duties. Call of Duties. I I like how I said that. Call of Duties. The Call of Duties. We're going to talk about Call of Duty zombies. And Ethan is going to be the knowledge master here the Sherpa of Call of Duty, because I know next to nothing about Call of Duty other than we used to play it back in the day. So before we get into the hot details, let's talk about our history of Call of Duty and specifically zombies. Let's start with Ethan. Ethan, how did you get into Call of Duty zombies? I actually got into this when Black Ops 2 came out. A couple buddies of mine, I was over at their house and we started playing Transit, if y'all ever played that map. It's this big kind of rural area there's a bus that goes around the map and you can actually ride it to all these different locations and the whole time you're just being swarmed by zombies oh nice it's yeah. awesome you played, that one. You played and, that one eric yeah is there a farm on that one and stuff yep yes sir yep very nice it's been an age but i played it so <laughs> ethan so you were at a friend's house you started playing this were you addicted right away oh immediately dude it was just so clever, the gameplay, the gunplay, the perks, the zombies, and then would eventually be other maps that would introduce new monsters, new perks, all sorts of these weird guns and weapons and stuff. And then I really got hooked in on the story, which I'm going to try to kind of hold back on that one a little bit because it's a clusterfuck, but I fucking love zombies. It's been an obsession ever since. Nice, nice. Eric, me and you, I think we have almost the same scenario when it comes to this. Me and you were introduced to it by our brother Mike. Is that correct? Mm, I actually played it before, Mike. I played it whenever it was World of War, Call of Duty. Oh, yeah? Right on. So So who introduced you to that? Probably Justin. I played a lot with Justin, our cousin. But it might have also been some of my friends, too. That's how I got introduced to it. It was Call of Duty and Dirt. Those were the games back in the day. What was the second one? Dirt. Two games that got played in Call of Duty back then. You didn't, you couldn't run like a circle to stay alive. You had three rooms. You had the first room, the second room that had the box, and you had upstairs. And you just kind of stood in the corner and hoped you got good RPG weapons. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. So you played it, and what was your reaction the first time you played it? You were young, but like Ethan's a younger. Creeped out by it, dude, when I first started playing it because like that stuff kind of it looked real to me compared to what I was used to playing anymore. You know. 100%. You know, back in the day when we were playing older games, we were like, oh, dude, this shit looks so awesome. Now we're like, dude, this shit looks so awesome. <laughs> well, <laughs> something, I don't know if you picked up on this or if you've played any of the newer games, they actually changed the way the zombies move and sound from World at War. They were a lot yeah. scarier, and that was kind of their first iteration of it, and they sounded more like traditional zombies and they were flailing all over the place like your stereotypical zombie i think that version of it is a whole lot more scarier than what they've made now because they just kind of have this high-pitched screeching noise as opposed to the this low groaning moan and sort of just undead hobbling it's i agree with the the little bit i played scary if you had the ray gun if you had the ray gun you weren't scared of shit (laughs) unless you killed yourself with it (laughs) Yeah, well, you just got to be careful. Don't pack a punch or something. (laughs) Mike, our oldest brother, he played it quite a bit on the PS3. And he would get drunk and et cetera, whatever. And he would just sit in his little cubbyhole of a room and play it for hours and hours. And Mike always had beer, too. We'd roll over there. I don't know if you did, Eric. You were underage. But I would roll over there and start drinking his beer and smoking his whatever and cigarettes like galore. And then we'd play zombies for hours and hours and hours. And 
within this small room, he had like good lighting and he had good music playing. And it sent the extra ambiance to the already creepy ambiance of the game. And I was terrible. And we play it online with people and they just yell about how terrible I was because Mike was pretty good at it. But man, it, I mean, you're taking that abuse while taking that abuse from the zombies, but it didn't matter. So much fun, fast pace, like I said, freaky, weird, team-based activities. You're yelling, go this way, go that way, go this way, go that way. It really is a community event. And that's what I liked about that version of the game was it, it really does bring you together and it, it lets somebody else take charge, especially if you're not good at it, or you get to be that person who takes charge and, and really leads it. And it's so much fun and so addictive. And I think that's why so many people have fallen in love with it, along with the storyline, which came later, because at first there really wasn't a lot of storyline to these games. It was more of an afterthought to the actual Call of Duty. Is that correct? Yeah, they kind of added it in as just a secondary ambiance, sort of well, just to help set the mood. The original Black Ops, it didn't have much of a story to it. I think it was the second one where they started picking that up, wasn't it? It was Black Ops 1. So let's hit this up, Ethan. Give us a little bit of a dive in to where this all began and how we eventually got to the zombies. Well, you mentioned World at War was your first foray into the whole zombies game mode. That's actually where it got started. Call of Duty then was on a two-year cycle. They had just started switching between two studios, Infinity Ward and newcomer Treyarch, who had previously worked on a couple other titles alongside the other studios. And World at War was their first big chance to make a name for themselves. This was their game, their baby. Originally, it was planned to be the super gritty, dark World War II story with a nice multiplayer add-on to it. And... They got to their second year of development, and they were falling behind. Everyone was losing passion for the project, and it was crunch all the way to the bitter end. At this point, they were just done with it. Well, somehow, some of these developers, they started working on this little side game mode. I think it spun out from a tower defense mission from the campaign where this airfield got bombed, and these Nazi soldiers came walking out of the fire. And someone Ooh. said, you know what? Wouldn't it be kind of cool if those were zombies? Oh, nice. So they started putting together piece by piece this little itty-bitty map, three rooms, where zombies would slowly break in. And one by one, developers from different parts of the studio would see it, play it, and go, oh, that'd be, that, that's so cool, but what if we did this? Or what if we added this? Or let me right. get this for you to make this better. And eventually it became Knocked Dur on Toten, the first zombies map. You had three rooms. You go through, board up all the windows, the mystery box. You'd get points by shooting and killing zombies, and they'd progressively get harder and harder as you played the game. There was no end goal here. You are going to die. It's just a matter of when mm. and how long you can survive. Can you find that right corner and stay alive? Was there ever even a final level created for it? Or did it just... I wonder if nope. they ever topped out the levels. You mean for zombies as a whole? Yeah, because you couldn't get mm. past like level like 17, 20. You, know? you had so many zombies coming in. You couldn't There's, have enough people in ammo. <laughs> people actually got so good at the game that they started breaking it, believe what? it or not. Yeah, the round counter, after you get past round 10, it stops going from tally marks and it'll just show you a solid number. Well, the number they used to store that was an integer. Those can only go up to 256 digits. I, I think it's 256, something like that. For whatever reason, you couldn't go past round 256. And so at that point, zombies are invincible, you cannot kill them, and the game just, <laughs> you're stuck. That's the version of their kill screen, the classic Pac-Man kill screen that you would see where half the screen is glitched out. It's just at that point, they're like, you know what, you're fucked, we're throwing them at you, where's zombies you could ever deal with, you're done. Oh yeah, although That's my awesome. favorite part of this whole thing was when they started putting this game mode together, they had to go through Activision and get them to approve it before they could actually add it into the game, you know partnerships with the publisher and whatnot and the former studio head not at the time he was in a different part of the company but he said we snuck out the executives from a meeting one at a time and had them play it and then leave again and they thought that the project was going to die right there but when they started seeing the executives sending emails to each other bragging about what round they got to that was when they were like okay we got it 
Yeah, they they definitely did a pusher, man. They pushed a little bit of that just, video just game a little, goodness. Just a little nudge. And, and, but that's the way it works. And I like the fact that it was an afterthought to the game because they were mm-hmm. making Call of Duty, or what, what was this first game called? World, World at War. And this was a continuation. Call of Duty's been around forever. So this yeah, it was the next, next entry iteration. in the franchise. But this just happened to be the mini game. Being able to play it online with your friends, that was a big deal too. I played online a lot. For that yeah. one? And so when you say you played a lot, how many hours were these stretches that you were playing? I want to talk about the addictive aspect of it. Yeah, let's get into the addiction well, of it. Well, you know, it was definitely nighttime. During the day when I was younger, probably in my teenage years, I was out during the day a lot messing with race cars and shit like that because we were the race car people. Then at nighttime, we played fucking video games all night long. Probably why dirt was thrown in there, but mainly zombies. When you're an angry person, you know, what's better than blasting zombies and seeing the blood fly? That's true. You sure. never, you, you're not an angry person, though. Were you an angry person at the time? Well, yeah, dude. Whenever you lose a race, you're an angry person. <laughs> <laughs> you lose a race, you just want to mow someone down. <laughs> so that was the other thing, though. This is really the beginning of online console gaming taking foot because this is something that brought people together at that time. This is one of the first, I, as far as I know, online experiences that really took hold. Everyone had fast enough internet at that time that anyone across the nation, including us and bumfuck Egypt, middle of nowhere, could play these games with people across the globe. And really, there wasn't anything quite like it and still not anything quite like it on the market at the time or now. It's four-player co-op and every single iteration that they'd come out with seems to always add something new. And you can go back and play it 10, 20, 30, 100 times, and you have a different game every time. It could be the same layout, you could take the same approach, and 10 different things happen that you don't expect. It's crazy. So this first game introduced it. It wasn't until the second game that it really took hold, correct? There were four iterations from the studio that started it. Okay. And each of those games had about four to five maps total that each brought something new to the table. It started with World at War, Black Ops 1. That's where the story and a lot of the more common mechanics really took shape. Black Ops 2 was where everyone fell in love with it, me included. Oh, I'm sorry, there's five iterations of it. Black Ops 3 and then 4. And each one, they significantly changed how the game worked, built upon it, and it got bigger prettier more insane and bruce campbell yeah bruce campbell he was in it i know that's all you have to say is once you get ash williams in there boom so here's the thing he was in a different iteration not by the main studio it was a different one we'll get to that later okay no problem so with that said eric you played the original did you play black ops one version black ops two version three four have you played every version of it i played up to two i'm pretty sure it's been a while since I played it, because I don't uh, buy new video game consoles. Me either. Me <laughs> so, either. They're a little bit too expensive for me. A lot of bit like, too expensive. Uh, they're way. Too I'd like expensive. it, but I just don't. I don't know. And also, about the time those came out, I had Lear, my mm-hmm. first kid, so it made me sell a lot of consoles because I was like, well, I don't need to play these anymore. Now I'm like, oh, where's my consoles? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's like, ah, oh, shit. Well, I mean, I'm the same way. I'm all about the classic gaming, but Eric says that, and he's got a Game Boy. Don't you have a Virtual Boy or something like that? No, I don't have that. I thought you did, but you've got Nintendo. Yeah, you've got cool. a Super I'd Nintendo. I like that. If you find one, you can send it to me. Dude, I'd enjoy if, it. If I found one, I'll send it to myself. I apologize. I need I that. I got a lot of retro gaming. That's about all I got. I don't have much new, but yeah. I did not really enjoy Call of Duty. Most of all their games I enjoyed, to be honest with you. Yeah. I like zombies, but I like their main stories, too. And I played their online a lot, their campaign, and just everything. In zombies, do you have a map or a setting that you just, that's your go-to when you want to play it with your buddies or whatever? It probably has to be map? the original. It would be the original Black Ops. Black Ops 1, the first map, is probably the best map I'm good at. The theater, Kino. Yeah. Yeah, that was the best one I was good at because I just wouldn't open the theater and I'd run circles and I could blast pretty high levels, you know. You think it's easier with people, but it's so much easier to play by yourself. The more people you add to it makes it harder. Why does it make it harder with more people? Well, first, most people can't deal with each other. Most people don't like each other. (laughs) One person wants to go to the left, one person wants to go to the right. So nobody can really agree unless you get your own party in there. 
and then some motherfucker takes a teleporter to pack a punch without you, and you're stranded down there having to wait for it to recharge, and yeah. Yeah, run circles, and then they're up there just throwing grenades down. Yep. How about you, Ethan? What was your favorite level? It actually was not a Treyarch map. It was from a different studio that did their own iteration of it. It was called Raven the Redwoods, Infinite Warfare. Oh, now and, that's the one that's like the 80s horror movie, right? Yeah. Or, or n- maybe uh, no, like a 90s. 90s. That's 90s. the 90s horror movie. And it's movie. got Kevin Smith in it, doesn't yes, it? Yes, sir. Kevin yeah. Smith and Jason Mewes actually does a voiceover in Seth that Seth Green well. also is in that, I think. He He's one of the voice. playable characters. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. I wanted to play that when I saw that. Which which Call of Duty is that attached to? Or is it it's Infinite on... Warfare? I do have it if you want to play it. Really. Oh, I kind of do, man. I've always wanted to check that out. Yeah. The storyline. Well, let's kind of get into that. These the storyline kind of took over after a while, and it became a lot about the storyline. And you had Call of Duty, plus you had the zombies. I don't know if it was as big as the normal game mode or not. People talk about zombies way more than they talk about Call of Duty. It, you it can't became... forget those little tiny things. Remember, you had to go out and find the books, and it would do... What would it do if you found... Well, it would play the song over the whole map. That's a big staple in zombies. The... Yeah, I remember the one you could play an Eminem song, because we always play it for some five. reason. Yeah, five. <laughs> Avenge Sevenfold also did a lot of the songs for some of these maps, some of which even got as far as being played on the fucking radio, dude. Black Ops 4, uh, there was a map called Nine that they did a song called Mad Hatter for, and I've heard that on the radio a billion times. Oh, it's so good. It was cool if you knew somebody that knew where all the stuff was. (laughs) Good point. Let's talk about that real quick, then we'll talk about the storylines. Yeah. Let's discuss I- incrementally what made each of these great. You said the music already and the fact that they had mainstream music or alternative rock music or metal or whatever you consider it. Usually metal. But, <laughs> but also on top of that, like you yeah, said, the items. Let's talk about some of the guns and, and how that compares to the regular Call of Duty because Zombie yeah. had its own. Was it less gameplay than the regular game or was it an exact copy of the regular game just with added uh, gameplay mechanics? Well, I can uh-huh. guarantee Ethan. Well, he shot a couple teddy bears. Teddy bears? What the fuck is he talking about? You get pissed when that box disappears. Well, what happens exactly? Explain it. Go ahead, ask Ethan. He'll tell you what happens. He All knows. Right, Ethan, what oh, happens? Oh, I fucking know. <laughs> From the from the very, I think it was like the second or third map they came out with, the mystery box, you dump 950 of your precious points. This thing's expensive as shit, and it spits out a random gun. It could be something amazing, could be garbage. Who knows? The most powerful shit is in there. You have to use it. Over time, you hit it X amount of times, that thing will fucking up and move and disappear on you, and you have to go find it again. It sounds like Eric's done this too, dumped a couple thousand points into that thing, got absolute garbage, and it just fucking leaves on you and now, goes to the whole other side of the map. I remember there were, like, little scribbles on the wall. Is that how you activate stuff? There were, like, pictures on the wall or something like that? Yeah, the chalk drawings. You yeah, could, what is there that There are certain guns you could buy throughout the map as you opened it up. I always picked up the MPL. That was probably one of the first mm-hmm. guns I'd pick up before I'd go to the box. Because there's a points builder. You had to build points. Because at a certain round, you would start running out of ammo and you'd have to start using traps. Yeah, that's true. MP40 was a, a go-to for me as well. That was a good one. And what are these traps you were talking about? I mainly played that one map, the first map on Black Ops, and all it was was electrical trap, and it would kill all the zombies, but you had to watch out because they would come back around on you. It was a strategic game once you start getting into higher levels. How about these teddy bears y'all were talking about? What the fuck is a teddy bear? That ties oh, into the story a little bit. When the box disappeared. So that ties into the story you said, Ethan? Yes, sir. And that would happen when the box disappeared, you said, Eric? Yeah. What are they, and what do they do? And are they worse than the zombies? That's more annoying than the zombies. (laughs) You wanted to fucking kill it. What are they? They're just a creepy teddy bear. If you give your dog a teddy bear and it sat outside for like a month and a half and it rained, your dog never played with it, go pick it up and look at it. That's what that teddy bear looks like. It is the creepiest son of a bitch ever. Well, what, oh, about, yeah. what about the Hellhounds or the Hounds of Hell? I remember that, too. What was that shit? I think it's like every 10 or... Round, yeah, every five or 10 rounds, they show up, and you'd get... You uh, wanted that. Yes. They're, they're not too horribly hard to kill, but it's really a tense moment because you'll be walking around the map, and then suddenly this flaming dog will just poke its head around the corner and dart towards you. Now, and is this all the games or just the initial game we're talking about here? Most of these maps have Hellhounds. There's okay. some variations they did on that for just different themes and settings, but 
typically it works the same way. You have a special enemy that'll show up. You kill a certain number of them, and that's the whole round. You tell everybody to reload after you shoot them, because then you're getting a max ammo. That's why you count on them so much. Yeah, you need you, that max ammo, because when you get into higher rounds, you run into problems where you run out of ammunition in both your guns, and you find yourself just running around circles, buying shit off the walls. So uh, each map usually has its own just bizarre weapon that is the best thing to possibly get. And this is alongside your ray gun, ray gun Mark II, whatever else. The first one of these was the Wunderwaffe DG2, Ooh, or as me as my friends called it, the Wonder Waffle. The Wonder Waffle. Do you you ever fuck around with that, Eric? I can't remember which one did that come in. It looked like a long rifle, and it had these three little light bulbs sticking out the side. You shoot it, and this yeah. big yeah. bolt of lightning would shoot out and about. arc across all these zombies that were near each other and just fry them. Oh, so it went through I, then? I like that yes. one. That one was good to have as a backup. That and the cannon. What was the big cannon one? Thunder gun. Thunder gun. That was a good backup weapon. If somebody died and somebody had the thunder gun, there was a good chance you'd be able to revive them. Oh, yeah. It was just like a big air cannon. It would send zombies flying. Just Badass. I think probably my favorite one, though, has to be from Black Ops 3. And it was in two maps, one of which you could not pack a punch, the second one you could. The first and the last map. It was called the Apothecan Servant, and it was literally this weird-looking little alien dude. You shoved your hand inside its butt. What? And it would, it would sit, like, right here on your, on your arm, and you'd shoot it. It only had, like, eight shots total, and a little black ball would shoot out of it and hit the ground, and it would open up this fucking black hole and suck in all the zombies and then explode. Oh, cool. Oh, That's it was badass. so much fun. It was um, so cool. That had to have been rewarding, too, to use that. You had to have been like... You had to save it, dude. Yeah. You had, I think, like, eight shots. It was shots. almost like having, a, like, monkeys. Monkeys were a big thing. What's a monkey? Oh, how did I forget the monkeys? Yeah, what are the monkeys? Monkeys were huge, man. You got those off the wall, dude. Those were another thing that were key for reviving people if they went down. So and what, is it, what does the monkey do? I heard people say, oh, you got monkeys, throw your monkeys. And I can't <laughs> count how many times I heard people say... Oh, man, I didn't even use my monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you forget you'd have them, and it's like, shit, I could have kept the game going for, like, another two hours if I just fucking throw in the symbol monkey. Well, what exactly does the monkey do? Do action monkeys come out? Yeah, what you would do is you would throw them, and they would just sit there, and they'd start playing, and all the zombies would stop chasing you, and they would hoard around it. You it's go, a little like, symbol maybe, monkey with dynamite attached to it. Oh, nice. Yeah, I think you got 10 seconds or something, maybe more, maybe less. Just enough to, to revive, revive someone. Hey everyone, it's just Doc jumping in here real quick to say thank you so much for checking out the podcast today. If you're enjoying it, please head over to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, iTunes, and give We Are Podcast a like. And if you get a chance, head over to our social media. All links can be found in the description. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at backslash We Are Podcast. And if you're enjoying the podcast today, please share with your friends. It's the only way we can grow this network. With that said, back to the podcast just the weirdness of these fucking games too that like you guys talking about it it just makes me want to play it because it just seems so weird and obscure like you've got monkeys yeah. and you've got teddy bears and you've got all this awkward and that it somehow fits the atmosphere of the game because really as you're does. saying it i'm remembering and i'm like yeah there were fucking monkeys in that game wasn't there it's so cool yes so origins and a map called der eisendrache it was, yeah, I know, I know. I, what the hell, Ethan? Um, they they like to flip around in the it wasn't language. Wasn't that? It was how well these... you said it. You were like, ha, ha, ha. I'm like, ha, 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 ha. Is Ethan a Nazi? What's going on? Yeah, I swear, <laughs> all the maps are like a German or something. They used to yeah. want it. I don't know if it's made up German or if it's real German. I think it's kind of broken, but for the most part, it's real words, just like Google Translatey words. Yeah. So, <laughs> so <laughs> what was it about this map? Origins at the end of Black Ops 2 was a big fucking deal because it had four of the most favored wonder weapons in a game because they were fucking powerful as shit, but they were hard as hell to get and upgrade. And this was the elemental stabs. Fire, wind, lightning, and ice. You had to go around the biggest map to date and still the largest map they've ever made, find three pieces of each staff and a little elemental crystal, put it in the staff. Dude, you just fuck things up with those staves. It was awesome. 
And they kind of had a different iteration of that in Black Ops 3 with this castle map where you could use these elemental bows. And if you pulled the string back and charged it, it would unleash like a tornado of lightning or fireballs would shoot out. And it's just over the top ridiculous shit is what made zombies so memorable. And obviously people love it. It has a long tail to it. And you can knife zombies in the game too, right? Isn't that one of the things that's like keys you can up and level? You get more points for it, but it gets less and less effective as you go. Okay. Because I remember that jumping up and stabbing them and then backing off and being like, boom, 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 boom. Fast pace. These games are just... Ballistic knives were good, but they were instant kill ballistic knives. The problem is you only got, like, I think 10 shots with them or something. Yeah, yeah. And if you pack-a-punched it, and there was cool little things like this hidden all throughout every map. If you pack-a-punch the ballistic knife, you could shoot it at your teammate if they're down, and it'll revive them instantly. Oh, nice. Yeah, I forgot about that. They were good. Ballistic knives, they were good because, like, if you want real strategic, you might have somebody that's there to back you up, you know, somebody that's more, like, running med, you know, medical. <laughs> they're what's the that? one that helps everybody falls down. Okay, so yeah. what's that? Medical, you, you take on the role of being the reviver of the group? I guess if you're around them, you revive them. You just go, it's a lot of communication because, and it also depends what round you're in. Sometimes you gotta just tell that guy, see you, you're fucked. You're losing all your guns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of different kinds of people you'll run across playing this game mode because of their different approaches to the game. You've got the points hoarder, the guy that has to buy all of his perks before he buys any doors. He's all about him before he'll help you. You've got the medic who's going to rush in and try to save you, even if it's a horrible idea. He's going to be the first one to go, oh, shit, I got you, bro. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck is the other one? The, f- the troll. The guy's going to turn around, turn the trap on as you're running towards it with a train of zombies behind you. So you have to run through it and you'll go down. He'll just fuck We've with you. We've all been the troll, though. Oh, Whenever you get that guy you don't want to play with, you're like, you know, what fuck you, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Oops, sorry, I didn't mean to flip that switch. <laughs> Hang on. Well, on purpose. I didn't mean to. I'll get the next one, though. <laughs> Do the next one, too. <laughs> yeah. And then you've got, like, the pretty much the, the lore master, or the guy that's more or less running the whole game and telling everyone what to do. They know where everything is. They know how to do all the Easter egg steps, where to get all the weapons, the unlockables. They're more or less the mastermind of the map. They're saying, you do this, you do this, run this guy over here while I do this. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of different... Were you that guy? Yeah, Yeah, just because I I knew everything. Like, I played these maps so much, someone would go, hey, I don't remember how to do this. It's like, oh, well, did you do this, 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 and this? And I'd have to go show them, or they'd go, oh, yeah, okay. Nice. It, so, it was fun. So we've talked kind of about how the game plays and the guns and this and that. Let's get to the story because I know that's the one thing Ethan really wanted to focus on in these games. I don't even know where to begin because obviously I know nothing about zombies other than I played it a little bit. But you were really, really intrigued by these storylines. What is it about the storylines in these games that gets you? It wasn't supposed to happen at all. And that's kind of been how they've been planning the story and running with it. They had this simple idea of like, okay, there's some Nazis, and they started working with this weird element they found and trying to make super soldiers and stuff, which, if I'm not mistaken, Nazis during World War II were actually trying to do weird, some weird shit like this. I mean, I, I believe all this stuff where they were involved with Satanism and stuff like that. Oh, yeah. Does that play into the storyline at all? Kind of, yeah. Okay. Is it's it a interconnected? Fiction. Is it all interconnected for, through all the games, or are they independent yes. of each other? Okay, yes. so there's an overarching story going on. Yeah, you've got your, uh, the Nazis made the zombies by accident. They started getting out. They captured a couple people and started using them as test subjects. There was some inner politics amongst the group. And it spins into this weird tale of now there's a Russian, an American, a Japanese guy who have all been kind of fucked up by this element and a Nazi scientist who's definitely fucking evil. They're the focus of every map. They're the four characters you play as. You go through, starting in Black Ops 1 Ascension, you have to do different things hidden throughout the map to complete the story bits for that map. And eventually it goes and goes and goes until you have this crazy story of these rockets get launched from the moon, the earth fucking blows up, there's multiple timelines, there's different dimensions and universes, Cthulhu monsters. Oh, nice. It spirals from nothing into 
everything, and then it's bonkers, dude. And, and this is over the expanse of that game or the whole game storyline? Five games. And eventually, don't you get to play as the Presidents? Yes. Starting in Black Ops 1 and all the way through to the most recent one in Black Ops 4, they really loved adding in these historical figures and then especially cameos from famous actors and actresses. Black Ops 1 had five. It was a Pentagon. You played as Kennedy, Castro, Nixon, and McNamara, Robert McNamara. And you fucking fight zombies to the bitter end. Or yeah, in his I case, remember to that Eminem. One. Yeah, I remember that one because I remember thinking that was weird. And then later they bring in Bruce Campbell. And is Bruce Campbell mm-hmm. playing a character or is he playing Bruce Campbell? Bruce Campbell as a character. Okay. Treyarch, the company that came up with zombies, they actually didn't have Bruce Campbell. They had Danny Trejo, Sarah Michelle Gellar, Robert England, Michael Rooker, and George Romero in the first, like... Romero the first did a yeah. voice in that? Was he playing He was Romero? the boss of that map. Bro, that's He would awesome. chase you around the map with a, I think it was like some light. And if you got too close to him, he would smack you with it and almost kill you. Okay, and for those that are listening, if you don't know who George Romero is, he is the, the godfather of all things zombies. He created Night and Living Dead, which me and Eric have a close connection to because we live near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, near where the original film was made. And if he had not made the original Black and White Night of the Living Dead, which you can go watch online if you want, it's free because there is no copyright on it. And you can take it, remix it, and do whatever you want with it. That movie is insane. It holds up in its social commentary, unknowns to them that they were doing about racism. <laughs> the star of the movie, it is one of the first films to ever have a lead Black character in the film. And the movie is underlying tones about racism. It's absolutely amazing. And the only, the only reason that that guy is the lead character is because George Romero goes, he goes, we're idiots. We had no idea. It was just my friend who looked good on camera and we went for it. And they That's had awesome. no idea that they were building this film that would be viewed socially in such a way for such a long time. But I, I'm like, how could that be that serendipitous? When you watch it, you're like, it had to be about racism. And they're just like, nope, just happened to be that happened by accident, which is absolutely crazy to me. But the fact that he created Night of the Living Dead, that spawned everything else that you see over generations. And then you get to the 80s, which really hits the boom of the zombie film. Everyone was making zombie movies, especially with the boom of VHS. And then you get to the 90s, 2000s, where you guys come along. I was by the age of 15, terrified of zombies. And y'all were just babies. Eric would come in the room. I'd be watching something zombies and he'd freak out. Wouldn't you, Eric? Yeah, yeah I wasn't a big fan of it. Mainly Resident <laughs> Evil. <laughs> that's evil. Oh. Well, let's tell the story. This is how yeah, I yeah, used to get I, So Eric would try to come in my room when he was a baby. And I was trying to get some pussy. Trying to get laid. How old were and, you? Uh, I was 16, 17. Eric would have been six or seven then because he's 10 years younger than me. And I was trying to get laid. But to get him to leave the room, I'd be like, I'm going to play Resident Evil. And he'd be like, oh, I don't want to see no Resident Evil. <laughs> he'd, he'd go cry to mom. He's like, he's playing Resident Evil again. She knew what was up. <laughs> Do you remember that, though, yeah, Eric? Probably made it embarrassing for you, Doc. Everybody knew in the house then. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, Doc's out there. Do you, do you remember <laughs> the time you came over and saw my ass? Yeah, I remember that too. I try not to. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. What? Oh, I was like getting my five, I was man. getting my fuck on, and I didn't lock the door because I figured people could hear the noises. And Eric bust in the room. I turned. I'm like, get out. Yep. <laughs> he went over I'm to my mom and dad. Call my therapist now because of this. Yeah. But what you do is you went over to mom and dad's, and what'd you tell them? I told him that you were trying to pin the tail on the donkey, I think, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> so I go over afterwards, and my mom and dad go, Eric said he saw your butt. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding me? But anyhow, <laughs> I should have doubled down on the zombies when they came in the fucking room. Seriously, though, it's Resident <laughs> Evil not. Still, if you play it, it's still kind of a creepy game. Oh, it's because horrifying. Of the door. Absolutely. That door. It, and when you walk up the steps, the suspense just builds so much. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And that's we got to that. do a Resident Evil episode, dude. Absolutely, let's get it. So back to the story, Ethan. They've had a fucking star-studded cast throughout all of these games for at least one map every game. Just to name a couple of people, Ray Liotta, Michael Madsen, Jeff Goldblum, Heather Graham, Ron Perlman, Kiefer Sutherland, Charles Dance, Malcolm McDowell, and Robert Picardo. And there's a bunch more. <laughs> Damn, dude. So they and go they, all out for this. They go all out, dude. And it's so much fun. 
I love it. And I even have loved some of the other studios' takes on it. Like in Infinity Ward, the original guys who made Call of Duty, they did their own take on zombies. And that's the one that has Seth Green, Kevin Smith, and all of them. You actually can play as Jay Farrow, Ike Barinholtz, Seth Green, and Sashir Zamata. And it's narrated and voiced over by Paul Rubens. Pee Wee. Nice. Yeah. Fucking yeah, Pee Wee yeah. Herman, dude. Like Pee Wee Herman. That's cool, man. And that's not part of the Call of Duty brand. That's its own thing, or it is? It's a different iteration of it. So it's separate from this huge, long story that spanned five games. It didn't do nearly as well. But I personally like that more than the... the I like it, dude. I liked, I liked When I saw previews of it, the camp factor of it, and the fact that it was like a 80s-slash-90s horror comedy made me go, like, I really want to play that. But I never did. So and I they think... did something that I thought was really fucking cool is they had their own story built into these movie trope sort of zombies maps. And after you beat the story for that map, you could play as the guest starring character in it. So you could run around and kill zombies as Kevin Smith, David Hasselhoff, Pam Greer, Elvira. It was Ooh. awesome, dude. Nice, dude. Well, loved it. how many games altogether have been released in the zombie series? Five from Treyarch one from Infinity Ward, and then one from Sledgehammer. So seven iterations total. I think it was Black Ops 1 had an arcade where if you busted out of the chair or something, you walked over, you could do that. Dead Ops Arcade. Yeah. 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 Then you have to that? bust out of the chair. Or how'd you get I think to so. It? I think so. It was a little top-down mini game. God, what is that like? Uh, fuck, I don't know. You just shot. You pointed the gun, and the gun just shot. I don't know. Yeah, it was, so it was top-down. You did the soldier. Problems. You'd spin in a circle shooting, and zombies would just run at you, and yeah. you'd move from level to level, and it was it was endless. It was fucking awesome. It's like uh, asteroids. Yeah. Is that what you're saying? Uh... Well, uh, I guess maybe somebody could see it like that, but and then you'd run to different levels. If you ran upwards, you could end up in like a prison. Then there's like little collectibles you got too that would assist you. You know, it was an arcade game setup. I didn't yeah. know if they did it on the other ones or just the original Black Ops. They did it again in Black Ops Three. That it was Dead Ops Arcade Two, but it was the same thing pretty much. Just oh wow, shit! Little so, other gimmicks and shit. So they made a third game within a game. So this was just like the real basic, like, well, that's cool looking. Looks like a cannon spike released on the Dreamcast, if anyone's ever seen that. It's just a, oh, it's kind of like Alien Syndrome. Yes, there it is. Alien Syndrome for the arcades, like arcade. That's badass. When was the last game that was released? Black Ops 4 was the last iteration of Zombies to come out. And personally, it was the weakest, in my opinion. Do you think? And they fucked up the story. So did they all the overarching storyline? They fucked it up. Yeah. So uh, is that where people kind of fell out of love with this game series, or people still love it? A lot of people are torn, and it falls to mostly Treyarch, the people that everyone loved and backed for so many years. They really fucked up just because of some of the stuff that's come out now that the game is like a year or so past. They split off into two stories that didn't connect to each other, and they decided, hey, this new story, we're going to try out this one first. So the first two extra maps that came out did not sell well at all so the resources were not there for the continuation of the current story and it it tanked the narrative damn that's you also can't ignore the fact that there is a lot of other good zombie games that came out within the time too yes that people changed to a lot of people quit playing zombies because you know just like anything sometimes i'll add something in it and a hundred people don't like it you know or a thousand people don't like something stupid they put in so they're not playing zombies anymore i'll go play left for dead or something you know (laughs) the biggest thing that a lot of people bitched about was they took out juggernaug and speed cola as perks juggernaug was a big thing because that left you actually hit a couple times that was huge people threw down that they just bumped up the health to what it would have been if you'd already had Jug. The kind of placebo that Juggernog provided, though, that, oh, I'm stronger, that was gone. And so everyone was like, yeah. what the fuck, you got rid of my perk. Well, the thing was, is everybody at, like, level 10, after, like, level 10 or 15, you almost wanted to have it. You had the to chance have it. it was good, you know. Then there's a difference, too. If, remember, if you played single player, you could get quick revive, where you actually revived yourself. Then if you played multiplayer, that perk changed to where you could just revive people faster when you fell down you got a pistol to shoot with. Yeah, they had to tweak some things for solo and group play. and I don't know. I think the latest game was just really a weak entry in the last half. 
the first half of the maps that came out, the story was fantastic. The gameplay was entertaining enough. They really fucked up a couple things that I didn't care for, but it was still fun. So I went along with it. So being a lover of zombies. He finally goes aggression out of exploding zombies. He's just getting wore out on it. So now he's just mellow. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. So yeah, have you... Like, like, I, I've killed some zombies in my days. He's going to be telling war stories to the kids. <laughs> oh, we were there. My day, we had to have juggernaut. You motherfuckers got it easy. <laughs> Y'all don't get it. Um. So with that said, would you look forward to another entry in the series, Ethan, or no? I actually really have hope for this franchise still. So the guy that was over zombies, that whole team now, he's moved on. He's left Treyarch as of this year. And I don't know what direction they're going to go in. They left off the story in a place where they can leave it or they can reset it. It's open to them where they want to go. But the guy who was head of Infinity Ward zombies, who made the stuff with Kevin Smith and Jay Farrow, all them, is a guy by the name of Lee Ross. And he is cool as shit. And he actually works for Treyarch now. I'm really, really hoping that they let him take over and tell whatever stories he has under his belt with those characters or in that universe or even something new. Because I think he could do a great job. So I was going to ask, do you think it's time for a reboot? Yes. Yeah. Time to. Well, the game they was, need to leave it. You know, the game's easy to mod or something, but because people are constantly putting up videos of them doing modded maps. Oh, yeah? So I don't know. For That's War and Black Ops 3, they released mod tools so people could make their own shit. And oh, so nice. you have custom zombies maps out the ass, custom perks, custom characters. They've imported guns from different games, perks, sound effects, everything. One yeah. of my favorite maps was World at War. You could play in Bikini Bottom Zombies as what? Patrick and SpongeBob. Yeah, I was going to say that you. I seen they made them into the fish. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that is awesome. So the mod community has really kept the game alive in its own way by expanding it. That's what yeah. I love about that. So shit. I love that. On top of that, I'd say if you're looking to get into zombies now, which I am. Well, there's two games you absolutely need to get if you can find them on sale. Black Ops Three, the Zombies Chronicles Edition. They remade most of the old maps from the previous three games and put them in there. And then as well as it's got that mod tool support. So people are still making new shit for that game even now. Nice. Um, and then Infinite Warfare Zombies, because that's the stuff Lee Ross made with all those cool characters and cool Lord knows what. It's fucking amazing. Lee Ross! Yeah. If you want the true zombies experience, those two games are the way to go. I'm so down. And a lot of this is still running on the new hardware, Xbox One, PS4, Steam. Yes. yes. We can steam this shit. Mm. For now. Right on, dude. Well, anything else you want to say, Ethan, about the game? I fucking love this series. The story up until Black Ops 4 was second to none. If y'all hadn't have done Black Ops 4, I would have been fine. That would have been great. Yeah. Sounds like been the way. Perfect. How about you, Eric? Anything else you want to say about Black Ops? Just that the game impacted my life. And I think that's important because you guys were in the age range where this game meant a lot. Whereas when I was a kid, we played GoldenEye for the Nintendo 64. That was our multiplayer game. We loved that. That was the first time we got into an FPS where you could battle with your friends. And in a lot of ways, this was your generation's GoldenEye. This and was that's, our GoldenEye. And it only you got to play it on a global level instead of the living room level with you know four people connected to a CRV. You guys had flat screens high definition, talking to people in other countries while playing this game. But Are you kidding? Experience... I played this on my own little CRT with the fucking AV cords or whatever. Well, I'll respect the oh. CRT. Mm. But what mm. I'm saying is you guys had the option. That did not change the feeling and the ambiance and just everything about playing that game as a community experience. And that's what experience. I said this so weird. Ex I said it like Red Grant. Did you experience? Uh, I think I remember. I used to call people from across the country, people who lived in other places, to get on the phone and say, hey, you playing zombies tonight? <laughs> people you didn't even know? Yeah. yeah. No shit. Well, I, knew, I did, but I didn't know them. I knew them, I knew them through talking to them a lot because I would – well, they would normally add me or I'd add them as a friend because we'd get talking on multiplayer. And a lot of time it wasn't through zombies. It was a lot of times it was through just the regular multiplayer. Because you yeah. played with four people. You only had four people in zombies there. You had like eight or ten or I can't remember. You know, then you'd call and then you'd always be like, oh, hey, you getting on tonight, dude? You getting on? 
and when they get on you, you get pumped, and they're when they're like, no, you'd be like, oh, you fuck, you're you're lame. You get pissed at them. <laughs> yeah, dude. Like I I can remember like five or six people off the top of my head that I met and played with regularly through Xbox Live or even PSN. And yeah. dude, those people were cool as shit. We played zombies, we played Halo, we played whatever, and that was the highlight of my younger years, middle school and high school, sure, all dude. the way through. The communication, dude. See, I didn't go to a high school, so I got a lot of communication through playing online because I went to a cyber school. So me playing online and playing live, it gave me communication with other people that I wasn't getting through school anymore. Yeah, and you wouldn't have met those people any other way because they're, you know, countries over or states over yeah. or well, there's some real freaky freaking people, you know. <laughs> yeah. They you start mean? saying, hey, you want to come down and visit me down here in my van? I'm going to probably be like, no. <laughs> no. No, thank you. I'm going to turn around and run it through my phone. No. Well, with that said, uh, anything else, guys? I think that was a pretty good closer. Eric, we do a thing here on We Are Bagu where we rate every game we review. Ah, yeah. So as a whole, Call of Duty Zombies – what do you rate this in, uh, what would that be? We use Super Sonic Mario? the Hedgehog to be, yeah. we use Sonic scoring. So S rank is top tier, A, e B, being, C, and then. E being the worst. E being the worst. Where do you rank zombies? I don't know. I, I was ready to give you a one through five. <laughs> well, just, what would you it's, say, a five? I don't know. Probably like a four. Because, then like, it, it, it sometimes it would get repetitive. And you'd start to get annoyed, too, because if you didn't get a good people with you, a lot of times you wouldn't make it past round 12. You wouldn't get people that would listen to you, and everybody just start opening every door. It wasn't much fun to play. And there's days where it's just like you're on your game, and there's days when you're not on your game, too, you know? It might just be a bias thing on me, but I'm going to give it a four because there's days where I really enjoyed the game, and there's days where I hated it. Hey, Rank. <laughs> yeah. All right. I'm going to go the same. From my experience playing it, I mean, I could even give it an S rank because I, the experience of community makes it even better for me. From the little bit I played it, that's what I took away. I enjoyed the game endlessly. I had fun. I don't know anything else about Call of Duty. I never played any of the other game modes. But playing that put me where it needed to be, and I enjoyed playing that with my brothers, and I enjoyed playing it in the scenarios that we played it. And even the last time me and Ethan played it six, seven, eight months ago here at my apartment, I had a fucking blast. We had so much fun playing it, so... I'm honestly, I'm going to give it an S ranking. I think it's great. Yeah, I, I, I'm I, an S rank with it as well. Most recent entries for it have been pretty lackluster, but I think it's gonna. It's just because they wanted to play it safe this time around, and I, I'm hoping they'll continue to innovate. But yeah, it had a huge impact on me. I love the times that I play it, and it's always a game I can go back to regularly. I can just pick it up years from now and still know how to play it. It's a oh, classic. Yeah. So definitely, I think I'm ready to play. I think we need to play Rave to the Grave. Rave to the Grave! Rave in the Redwoods, let's get uh, it! Um, well, definitely, let's do that. Well, this has been Duck, and I have been here with... Ethan. And our very special guest, my little brother, Eric. Eric, thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, thanks, Eric. You're welcome, guys. Thank right. you for having me. I appreciate it. But Eric, we got to remind you something here. It's very important. It's just you a, understand just a little thing. something. Just i got to tell you this, man. I hate to say this. Lay it brother. on him. Lay it on but, him. But uh, you got to remember something. Just one thing. You ain't Billy Mitchell, bitch. Sorry, you, you ain't. ain't. You ain't no Billy you Mitchell. You ain't Billy Mitchell, bitch. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, with that, later on. <laughs> you ain't Billy Mitchell, right. bitch. You ain't Billy Stop Mitchell, trying. bitch. And there it is. Thank you so much for checking out the podcast today. If you have enjoyed it, please do not forget, share with your friends. That is how we grow the network. And if this is your first time listening, head over to your favorite podcast app, Spotify, Stitcher, Podbean, iTunes, and give We Are Podcast a like. And if you've enjoyed this podcast, you're going to love the other podcasts here on the We Are Podcast Network. We have We Are Era, where we talk about movies, entertainment, whatever the fuck we want to talk about. That's me, that's Jake, that's Hobby. We're breaking down pop culture, and we're having a blast. Don't forget, Heroes Jiro's a Dungeons and Distraction side quest. Me and the boys were sitting down, we're playing some D&D, we're having so much fun. You can go ahead and start that from the beginning of the journey, Season 1, Episode 1. You're going to love it all the way through. And finally, I hate being sober. Personal stories from epic people. I'm going to sit down with some of the most epic people I've ever met in this world, 
and we're going to talk about their life, we're going to talk about their trials and tribulations, and we're just going to talk about their journey this far. Head on over to our social media. All links can be found in the description. You can find us at Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at backslash we are podcast. Also, head over to the Facebook group, We Are Era. We would love to see you in that group. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed the podcast today, share it with your friends. That's the only way we can grow this network. But with that said, I have to remind you, I can never let you forget this. You ain't Billy Mitchell, bitch. So stop trying. We'll see you next time.